and this video will transfer such a model of curtains and tool. I'll show you how to create the unwrapping, how to create the tow material. Let's see what we should get in the final result. That is, just like in old renders, when they were just evolving. In those distant times, for example, when Wii Ray was just gaining its popularity and strengthening its position in architectural visualization and in other industries related to 3D. At that time, there were such materials too. With subsurface glow, with translucency, they were quite problematic to implement. And until now, Unreal also has such unanswered questions as reflection and translucency, and these issues are slowly being addressed. So I want to show you a simple technique for creating such a material that looks like tool. This is the basis of any visualization of a curtain, subsurface glow, translucency. So that's the kind of result we're going to achieve. The result we'll achieve with you, it will be seen that this is textile. It will not be just a homogeneous material, but as you can see in the picture, we'll get this result. First of all, let's prepare the model. I will not use curtains on a classic curtain rod. I will use a hidden fastening on guide of the thin rail. First, let's check if there are any unnecessary incorrect parts or elements. Everything seems to be fine, but for this model, the author carefully and realistically made the thickness. which showed the fastening to the cotton rod. For our purposes, since we will attach our cotton to the guide, we need to remove this thickness. It's no use to us at all. So we select one polygon of this thickness and hold down the shift and we click next to the adjacent polygon. And the geometry of the thickness is selected with a loop and then we just delete it. So we divided our geometry into two elements, one of which we just removed. Now there is, let's check it out, only one element of geometry left. I'll go into isolation mode, then select the points by pressing the number 1 and also select the top row of vertices, but only the top. Well, you can have two, no difference. Let it be two. Use soft selection. Let's come back. Here we need to increase fall off. The radius of the soft selection, then take the movement and move up. And displace our edge. All is ready. In the same way you need to do with curtains. The same actions, let's move on. And let's see if there is an unwrapping. To see it, we open the editor in the designated unwrap. There is no unwrapping. OK, we'll create our own unwrapping. I'm using the best software for unwrapping, it's called Rhizome. Anyone who follows my channel knows how to use Rhizome and how it works. Well, see for yourself. This is a rather complex model, since we have a textile model and a lot of folds. I mean, it's quite difficult to deploy such a model using standard tools in 3ds Max. But Rhizome cope with this in a moment. Let's create a second channel, or rather, an unwrapping on the second channel. Again, for those who may not be aware, I will remind you that the first channel is for the texture coordinates. That is for the material, and the second channel is for backing light and shadow on the object. Therefore, the second channel that we need to prepare should be the most accurate. I'm using Bridge. I showed you how to set it and how to set Ryzen. In a nutshell, using Ryzen you can set a bridge that allows the model to be easily thrown from 3ds Max into Ryzen and to return an already deployed model back to 3ds Max. So how does Ryzen work? The algorithm is very cool and the most optimal for unwrapping both in architectural visualization and for game development. Let's click on automatic unwrapping. 
That's it, the unwrapping is ready. Now I'm going to take a look at stretching polygons. If blue and red colors appear here, it means that polygons, islands are stretched somewhere or they are compressed somewhere. As you can see, everything is ok and the unwrapping is ready. Literally in one click. Let's move on. Now I would better write, because our island expands beyond the borders, and I'll stretch it further. The only island we've got, right? Press Ctrl plus S, and this unwrapping goes into 3D Max. Now we can just apply the UVW map, meter by meter, in the box parameters. But it is easier to do the following. We convert to editable poly. Now look, let's first check on wrap. There is a map channel in the settings here. So the first channel isn't there right now, right? Let's go to the second channel. And we don't need to select move, but abandon the first channel. We leave the first channel and we have the unwrapping that we just did in Ryzen, right? So what can we do? We can go back to the first channel, but this time we click move to shift our second channel to the first. We'll get the same unwrappings for both texture coordinates and light coordinates. That's all. Everything is ready to move the model. We'll move it manually. We won't use any third-party plugins. First of all, I'm going to move our pivot down to the center. And now I'll take Move, and for Unreal it will be best for us. Although this is an optional condition, but it is better that the center of the object be at zero. It will be easier for us later. Next, we export everything selected. Here I have a project folder called fbx. Here we write sm, and I already have fbx version 2. And I will later compare with datasmith, how datasmith will create automatic unwrappings. Done. There are smoothing groups here. In geometry you can set automatic settings. It's normally if the value is set to 1, but if not, then just select the value in centimeters, and then click OK. And let's go to Unreal. Here we click OK. So it's called SM Curtains version 2. What do we need to click here? You need to click Import. First of all, let's remove our geometry. We just click Delete and delete again. Let's put our two new geometries here and set up the material. Now I'll also show you how to quickly configure the material. So now we move to FBX, select curtains here, we need to remove skeletal mesh. We don't need auto-generate collision. In the additional settings here, we need to make sure to remove generate light map, because we have our own good prepared ones. And do not create material. Then we click import all. Before of course you had to create. You know how we do it. Now, a short digression. Let's create a copy of the project. This can be done quickly. The project is optimal. Optimize, it waits little. In short, let's create a clone. Here we'll write, to make it easier for me, curtains remove. Create, continue. In order to not change the level that I have prepared, I will leave it for tests. Because I saw in the comments you asked me to demonstrate how light would work with the windowsill. I basically prepared the scene, and we will continue to work with it. So we launch our copied scene. Now we will remove the curtains we don't need, those that were here, and set the loaded new ones. And then we'll also load Datasmith and see what the difference is. So, well, then I instantly remove the curtains, remove again. Import. Here is the version we need. Check it out here. UVs should not be generated and the material should not be created. Click Import. Geometry is being imported now. 
and I will create a new folder here. Here I will transfer, move here, so that we know later, right? And we transfer, that's it. There is a very important point here, in order for transparency to work the way we need it. If we usually put the model with the front side, then this time we need to turn our model inside out. That is, where our normals are deployed from us. That is, we see such transparent geometry. I'll increase it to the required size. It is also important for our geometry to not intersect here. Therefore, by eye can be done so that there is a small distance to the ceiling. That's all. Let's go to the material. Now I will show you what material will be created. Here I have two versions prepared by me. Let's take a look at the tool we have as a base material. This is the parent material. So we have a base color which is controlled by a parameter. Also I pass it through multiply. And when we reach the maximum color, we can multiply it a little, using one more additional parameter. Then we put the variable exponential parameter in a Fresnel through lerp. And also here we put in the B parameter. And in the A parameter we put the texture. That is, opacity will create such an effect of fallover tissue and, at the same time, a kind of transparency will be created. Subsurface color is responsible for the color of translucency. That is, the subsurface glow that you can also change, either simply from 0 to 1, making it black or white, or you can assign a node that will change the color not in the range black and white, but can also set any color. Here you can do the same, but we are now interested in tool in the classic white color. Next, I attached multiply to the texture. This means that if you want to change the coordinates of a texture simply as an uniform, I mean proportionally, then put the text of the coordinates in UVs in texture sample. But if you want to divide the two axes into U and V into X and Y, then we need to apply a pen and send the variable parameters in A and B. That's all. Here's the kind of material. It's usually optimized. It works well, and I always try to create such optimized ones. So what are we doing? Let's create a new material. Here we select material. Here we type mbase2. Let's go inside. Click enter to do this. I won't do multiplication. I'll just create. I hold down S, then left click, and this will be diffuse. We can add this diffuse to base color. Now press Ctrl plus W to copy it. Next. Take a look here. We don't have subsurface right now. So we look in the settings of the material itself. Here is surface. Here is translucent. Here we set subsurface. Let's turn it on so that the two sides are visible because if we leave it that way, then our front side, which is the semi side now, will not be visible to us. In short, we need to set two-sided here, and now subsurface has appeared here. We set and rename here, then it is translucency. Next, we create lerp with the right button and right lerp, linear interpolation. Here we attach it to opacity. After that, we will create and place Fresnel into the mask. Now let's put Fresnel here in alpha. Let's create a variable parameter and name it Fresnel accordingly.
Let's attach it here. P parameter gets simply. Hold C. Left click and just name it B. And in the A parameter we'll put the texture. Now we'll find this texture quickly. There is a tool here. We use this texture. Show in Explorer. Let's just open the folder where our project is located. Here it is. Fabric Alpha. New curtains we throw in here. This is our texture. The texture is quite simple. It is being imported now. Here you can see how it is imported in the import windows little part. Let's see how it looks. Here is how it looks. That's it. We'll use it. Let's go to material. Let's do it like this. Just throw it over here. We'll make this texture. If anything, it can be changed easily. We convert it into a parameter. That is, then the parameter allows us to set any texture and we write it that this is alpha or opacity. We attach opacity to lerp to input A. And then we need to create so that we can change the scale of the texture. We hold U, left click, that's it. If we attach it to the UVs now, then everything will change proportionally. Our object texture will change, but we need to make so that both pairs U and V, X and Y change themselves independently of each other. For this we use multiply. We set texture coordinates to multiply A, then we look for append. In the append we hold down S, a variable parameter. This will be U. If you click Ctrl plus W, this will be a B. Let's connect them. One, two, and here we connected this one too. Done. And let's set the minimum values. Default value is set to one here. And we will leave the translucency as zero for now. We also set Fresnel value to one. For B we set value to one too. These are the default values. And finally we attach our branch with texture coordinates into the opacity texture. That's all. This is a simple material, which will work. It is optimal, and it can be changed. We have created a parent, a main base material, and from it we will create an instance. Therefore we need to continue to take such an approach while working on optimizing our scenes. Well, as I said, we need to create an instance from the base material and go into it to apply this material. We have selected geometry now. We assign the selected instance to geometry. And now look, allow translucent selection is set here, right? And T hotkey also, so this function is not set by default. This means that clicking the transparent object such as a glass, for example, or with translucent parameter, we will select the object incorrectly. Now I have selected the backdrop, which is in the background here. In order to here look at this, I'm trying but this curtain is highlighted selected and the tool is not. Press T, click on the tool and it is selected. That is, T is a hotkey for turning on off this mode. Well, let me edit it a bit, like this. Since the optimal wrapping was created, I will set the light mass value to 256 for it. I mean, if you use Tatasmith, then the wrapping is not quite optimal there. So it is clear that this is all done manually. There are no magic buttons. And there you need to raise it to 512 or to 1024. Now you will see for yourself what kind of unwrapping will appear, what kind of unwrapping you get, right? And such an unwrapping should be increased by two or three times. And of course, if we have a lot of such unwrapping and all objects need to increase this coordinates and light mass, then it is not very optimal for work and absolutely not suitable for commercial work. Let's check it out. I just select the object, export selected, next.
I save to a folder by selecting Datasmith. Here I click Selection OK. That's all, it's done. Let's go directly to Unreal. I turn on Datasmith in advance. Let's go here and open Remove. Then we upload, we will upload it into New Curtains folder. And click OK. What do we need to transfer from here? First, I'll check the box here. And I'll uncheck the boxes there so that only material and textures are transferred. And after that, I'll click Import. Now we are importing it. That's it. Done. Firstly, our geometry flew into the middle of nowhere. Let's press Alt plus G and F to zoom out. Where's this object? There it is, here. It flew to the center of our scene. Next, we put it here. We press Alt plus G and go to Perspective, then press F. So, it seems like our tool is ready. But if we go into it, we can see it here that it needs to be improved. Refraction should not be here anyway, because tool has no refraction in. I mean, in translucency we don't need it, it's not physically correct. Besides, we have many different parameters. The textures are loaded three times, in short, it's not very optimal. Let's look at the parents' links. As you can see, there are many things here. And at the same time, in order for such material to work, it needs to be finished. That is, we need to set the subsurface and two sided. Actually, nodes are code. That is, in fact, it's not so scary. In any case, the code increases the load on your computer. However, overloading takes place, because there are many identical textures here. That is, it was possible to assign one texture to different nodes. But firstly, they are copied, and every time the texture passes through a certain actions, it takes many resources, of course. It takes many compilations, the changes and saves take longer, in short, resources are gobbled up not optimally. Let's now see what geometry came up. So here is the first channel, you can recognize it, right? It is that channel, those coordinates that we have on the first and second channels. I will assign unwrap function now. Remember that we created manually, such an unwrapping using Ryzen, right? It was transferred because it was on both the first and second channels. And on the second channel, which is now the first one, Datasmith has created an auto-unwrapping. As you can see, it is absolutely not optimal for such an unwrapping. For such small areas, it is necessary to increase the light mass to 512 or 1024 for such objects. If there are a lot of such objects and it will be necessary to increase the light mass by two or three times, then the light calculation and the file size are lengthened, the materials are not very good. So if you want to get a good result, then everything needs to be done optimally by hand, and this method should be used everywhere. I mean, there are no magic buttons that people want, but actually, Datasmith is a good tool. Although, it requires improvement. That's all, it's done. So, look again, we have two unwrappings. Our material is ready. The material is assigned, and we just need to click on Build. Build will be baked for 2 or 3 minutes, maybe 5 minutes this level. After that, we will set up the material itself. Ok, I put on pause. Let's look at our result after baking. Settings are still not fixed yet. We are going to change them now, so the result is different. Here, look, here the result is less transparent, but here, well, why not, this tool can also be. Let's check again that we have instance assigned. Instance is assigned right here. Let's open it, this instance. Now I'll show you parent quickly. So here we have the settings. We have a variable color on translucency and on diffuse, and opacity is the most important part of this material. Let's edit it now. Something like this. 
Let's move it like this. Well, let's edit. So, we can change opacity. We don't need to do this now. Put a check mark on B. You don't have to remember what is responsible for what. In short, when we don't have many parameters, we just try to achieve the result that we need. It is desirable to see the result right away in order to see what we get in the end. Diffuse. Here, you see, you can make the tool darker. Here's the base color that we made. Here we can make its color lighter. The value is up to 1. Next, Fresnel. Translucency. Do you see? It can be changed too. UV and U and V. Now you can see the texture. If we hold down the Alt and move closer, then you see that the texture is not visible now. Here you need to set both values to 1. Here the texture begins to appear. Let's get closer. Here it is. And I want to make it a bit disproportionate. So that this texture is stretched up vertically. That is something like this. Well, let's set the values to 1 here and to 0.5 for example here. Maybe too big, but it depends on the material you want to get. So we get a beautiful tool. Which can be controlled by using instance. That is, we put it like this. Change the texture of opacity, if we need it. Here is the value for B. It is a softer or something. We can make diffuse darker. For Fresnel, you can set this. For translucency, here's the black color. Let's change it like that. The texture is probably too big now. So I doubled it. So this is the kind of material we get. Look, there is a black edge here. It can be lightened by using translucency. You can set any color. If we need to, we can change the color in parent to any other. That is, set a changeable color and change the color of both the base diffuse and all. So now the base tool should compile and load. So you can make any colors, that is, once you make such a material and drag it from project to project, but the geometry will change. That is, geometry is very important, and it is necessary that it be of very high quality. That is, sometimes it needs to be manually edited, in order for it to be more correct, so that the result is realistic. And after that, the most important thing is to create the unwrapping. I am in favor of high-quality manual unwrappings. Besides, now the technologies in this matter have advanced, that the unwrappings are created very quickly. And now there is no need to spend time on manual unwrapping. It's all done in automatic mode in Ryzen. The only thing you need to edit the sims there. But in general, if you want to achieve a good result, then you need to invest both time and knowledge. So in order to get a good result, you need to control every step and to optimize it manually and do the unwraps manually. Yes, it is permissible to create the unwrappings in automatic mode using Datasmith and to create materials using Datasmith. But these are very simple models, walls or books or very simple decor. 
Well, if you liked this video, like it as usual and support the lessons that I am recording for you. If you are interested in some topic or some material, please write in the comments. I usually consider all the offers and try to disclose the topic, which is offered in the comments. So don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed yet and good luck. See you soon. Bye.